I told you that there is a way to veto corrupt laws, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about the power of jury nullification. Have you seen the billboards about jury nullification? In his famous letter from Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King wrote, there are two types of laws, just and unjust. I would be the first to advocate obeying just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. The billboards in question have sprung up in and around metro stations. Here's one of them. They're close to downtown court. When you serve on a jury, you can veto a bad law by refusing to convict. Every juror has the power to judge the law itself, not just the facts of a case. When good people refuse to convict a fellow human being for a victimless crime, they are practicing jury nullification. They carry messages such as good jurors nullify bad laws. Jury nullification was practiced in the 1850s to oppose the Federal Fugitive Slave Act. Jury nullification is on the front line against drug prohibition. Jurors who believe the marijuana laws are wrong are voting to acquit. And it's not just drugs either. I'm happy that you're joining us because we want to know all about these billboards. They seem to just spring up overnight, but what's the intent behind them? Well, I want people to know about jury nullification. This January 2015, we're informing New York City jurors and the New York City public of their historical right and sacred civic responsibility to nullify bad laws in the jury box. We're using big, impactful phone kiosk advertising, as well as personalized street pamphleting to put the judges and prosecutors in New York City on notice that they can't continue to railroad people into cages for victimless crimes. Be a part of this historic effort. We're surrounding the Daniel Patrick Moynihan United States Courthouse at 500 Pearl Street, New York City, with six of these phone kiosk ads from December 29th to at least January 25th, 2015. Here's a map of the Civic Center area of Lower Manhattan. The phone kiosks are marked in red. The juror entrance of the Moynihan Courthouse is marked with blue. Here's an image of the pamphlet we'll distribute. The pamphlet multiplies the impact of your donation by connecting recipients with an online educational campaign. Success is not guaranteed, but failure is if we don't try. Be a part of the solution. Have an impact right now. Show the judges and prosecutors who's in charge, us. Join our campaign to end victimless crime prosecution in New York City in 2015. Donate now. I wouldn't have advocated this idea of jury nullification, but for my experience as a prosecutor, uh, bringing these cases right here in D.C. and just developing so much respect for the people who show up for jury duty. They're ordinary women and men off the street, and they have good common sense. So... When I worked as a prosecutor, we all knew if we had some young guy who was charged with a nonviolent drug crime, these D.C. jurors were not going to send that boy to jail. The war on drugs is a war on freedom. It's really a war on you. The justice system is polluted with, with so many victimless crimes. They want it to be just this simple assembly line. You walk in the front door and you exit uh, into the jail. 2.2 million people in this country behind bars. That's one out of every 100 adults. If you're a black man over 18, that number is one in 15 in a cage. For black men in their 30s, that number is one in 10. Right now, millions of people's lives are being destroyed by this selective and racist war on drugs. So people get these convictions, they can't get jobs, they can't get loans, they can't live in federal housing. You know, it's devastating families and communities. When, when one out of 100 adults is in a cage and, and we really have no way effectively changing all these laws. But jury nullification is a way for the people still to impose themselves between the government and the government's victim. In the short term, we really got to save some of these lives from these awful uh, conditions. And this is how legislators will know that their laws are wrong. Jury nullification played a key role in ending alcohol prohibition. Juries refused to convict people for alcohol-related crimes. That's how, the, that's how they knew to change the laws. Got to ask you this question, though. Is this really legal and if it were would the judge in these different cases not 
say that this is an option for you as a juror? Well, it is absolutely legal, and the Supreme Court has ruled on it. This right is enshrined in many state constitutions. However, prosecutors don't want the jury to know about it. They want convictions. They have done quite a, a bit to make sure that juries stay uninformed. So what I want to do is help anybody understand what their rights are if they're selected for jury duty. This is an in incredible opportunity to stand in the way of unjust laws and government tyranny. As their laws against us become more tyrannical, the need for fully informed juries becomes even more imperative. As much as the judges and prosecutors hate this, the jury is their last hurdle before they can harm us. If a single juror says not guilty, the prosecution must either give up or try again with a new trial. If the entire jury says not guilty, the prosecution is defeated. If multiple juries say not guilty, then unjust laws are nullified. Frederick Douglass says, find out what any people will quietly submit to, and you have found out the exact measure of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. So it's time for us to prescribe some limits on those tyrants by refusing to cooperate. Remember, no victim, no crime. Thank you very much. Join our campaign to end victimless crime prosecution in New York City in 2015. Donate now. This effort is part of a nationwide educational campaign unrelated to any specific case or defendant.